Hello YouTube, Joshua C here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be comparing Matco versus Snap-on impact swivel sockets and 3 8 inch drive. So let's begin. All right. So what you guys see in front of you on the top row are the Snap-on sockets from three different generations, and on the bottom row we have the two Matco pinless swivel sockets for comparison. So let's get into the snap-on sockets first. Here, I want you guys to focus your attention on the joint design. So the snap-on utilizes a ball joint design with a fixed cross pin, and this cross pin is held in by a sleeve, which is a uh, crimped on from the top and the bottom. So this is on the vintage snap-on sockets. Here you can see the spring that helps keeps the joint tight. On the B suffix, in this case, this example is from 1996, you can see that this ball joint is still utilized. With this, uh, the ball joint articulates around this fixed cross pin, and this cross pin is held in, uh, held in place by this collar or sleeve. Now, the C suffix is uh, visually distinct from its earlier counterparts as that it's sleeveless. However, if we take a closer look, we can see that it's still a ball joint design with that same cross pin. You guys can see that? The same cross pin. However, instead of using a sleeve to fasten that uh, pin from coming out, uh, it's actually welded and then ground down to a uniform OD. So you guys can see that. And once again, it's sprung. So that helps keep the, the joint tight from uh, wobbling. Another interesting thing that I've, uh, I've noticed, at least visually, is that the earlier models have less meat uh, on the, I guess, the tail end of the ball versus the later revisions. And let's do a comparison on the body. Here you can see uh, the differences between the A, or I mean not the A, but the non-suffix and the B model are, I mean, negligible. Uh, you can see the collar uh, OD is virtually identical to the newer models uh, and you can see that there's uh, on the drive end it's more neck down uh, I don't have a mic but you could just tell by eyeball that it is a um, it's skinnier okay okay so in case that this was hard to illustrate I have another example of this same uh, ball joint design. So here you can see the uh, um, the outline for the cross pin, and you can clearly see the ball joint itself and how it rotates about that that fixed pin to provide the articulation necessary. I'll get you the part number on that. That's actually a Matco uh, socket, but nonetheless. Uh, my emphasis is on the design. So now that we've talked about that circular, uh, that ball joint design, let's move over to the Matco Pinless. Matco Pinless uh, has got that name because it uses a four-lobe interface in which the joint, uh, so it's a two-piece forged unit where the uh, drive end is actually a, a, a functional female while the uh, socket end is a functional male with respect to the joint. And here you can see that the interface is such that it's along an arc as indicated by the wear marks on this socket. Now this is very important as the force or sh stress um, when torque is being applied to the socket is distributed among four leading edges. This is also here, just another example 16 millimeter. You can see you can see that the uh, the contact patches are very wide and along an arc surface. Now this is very important to my uh, uh, to why I prefer the Matco over the Snap-on design. Uh, when you utilize a cross pin the stress has to be applied to the two outermost edges of the pin while the pinless design is much more robust as it uh, concentrates the force among a greater area. In my experience I have yet to see a joint fail. I've only seen the either the joints get sloppy or the socket uh, actually wear out. Um, the same could be said with the snap-on. However, 
uh, they have the additional failure mode of the cross pin uh, shearing. Another note, in case you guys might be wondering, is why or do I have 9 16 and 14 millimeter and 5 8 and 16? To be honest, I don't have any snap on in metric, uh, and the crossover is very close. And this crossover is important because we're able to compare the uh, the body. So, a matter of fact, let me get the new one. And here you could see that the OD, uh, I mean, if we were to superimpose it, granted this is not very, I don't have a mic, but if I were to eyeball it, I would say the Matco is slightly thinner, but it would be negligible with only the necking down on the drive end. So I would give it, uh, even if it's slightly shorter, I I don't think it's going to be too much for concern on size. However, uh, the joint design is really the, the, the area or aspect of concern in my opinion, uh, as these types of uh, sockets are going to be utilized on like bell housing bolts, right? So you're going to have tight, tight space constraints uh, and high, high torque load. Uh, especially if you're going to use like a half inch to three eighths inch extension reducer. Um, uh, another thing that I want to mention is that I prefer the mid length Matco sockets. And the reason being is not only do most bell housing bolts, uh, most, or I should say some, not all, uh, have a secondary function. Their primary function is obviously to fasten the transmission to the engine. However, secondary functions could be in the form of having a stud and a nut. Um, on on that, that on that fastener, which could be used to util, um, fasten tranny lines, um, grounds, brackets for wiring, or even uh, simply a dipstick. So it's good to keep that in note. As uh, as you can see, these are not the most compact sockets um, versus uh, a universal and chrome version. However, um, it's good to have the added utility of a deeper socket as it's able to remove the stud fasteners found on some bell, hose, bell housing. So uh, that's hopefully this information was useful to you guys. Comment, like, and subscribe and you guys enjoy your day.